Hello, this is Phil Thomas, New Era Systems. Today, Dan and I are going to go through the final tests of a pair of MT4700 watt KU band TWTAs. They're set up in a one for one configuration and that means that both these amplifiers will be running at the same time. The output of one will be directed towards the antenna and that will be the live amplifier. The other one will be directed to a dummy load that you'll see on the back of this configuration in a moment. If the operational amplifier fails for any reason, that switch in the center will detect it and automatically throw a baseball switch on the back of this configuration and make the redundant or the second amplifier operational. And it's all automatic. This way you can run your teleport without worrying too much about something catastrophic happening in the middle of the night. Now let's look at the back of these two amplifiers and see how they're connected. I'm going to hand over to Dan in a moment. You're looking at the back of the amplifiers now and we hope to show you the various pieces of plumbing and how they're connected and why they're connected. Now I'll pass over to Dan and he will explain each piece to you in detail. Hi, this is Dan. So this is HPA number one on the bottom. Um, it needs to be on the bottom due to the orientation of the baseball switch. Can't roll the baseball switch because of the heat exhaust of the amplifiers. So the orientation of this is important. HPA number one, it's plumbed just through twist flex into the, the baseball switch. Um, here we have a dummy load that's shipping with the system. It's a dummy load and a cross guide coupler that is a 750 watt dummy load. Now here's a close up of the dummy load and cross guide coupler. This is a basically 50 dB down port here. This cross guide coupler and dummy load is only here for testing purposes. Again, this setup here is for testing. Obviously, once it gets racked, it would be dressed up much nicer than we have it here. Um, antenna load, the antenna will be the load coming out the top port. So now from here, we're going on to the actual redundancy controller and the cabling to it. Please note it is important that you have this unit unplugged when connecting or disconnecting any of these cables because there is logic in this device and you don't want to short anything out. As you connect these cables, please do screw them down because this cable in particular is the one that throws the mute signals to each amplifier when the baseball switch rotates. That's extremely important that these are screwed down all the way. This controller throws the mute command at the transmitter as the baseball switch rotates so that it doesn't cause a visoir effect and have reflective power bounce back into either of the amplifiers. So both amplifiers mute whenever the switch is thrown. This is actually a Y cable. One set goes out to the bottom unit. One set goes out to the top unit. There's a DB15 and a DB25. It's very obvious that they're the only connectors that they can connect to on the units. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and power up each of the transmitters. Note that I do have this switch turned off or powered off right now until the transmitters come up. This way when I power the switch up, it will see the logic from these two devices. And here we go. So now it's gonna take, I, I think it's roughly 200 seconds or 220 seconds for the filament time delay and that's what we're waiting on. And at this point I can go ahead and plug in the control switch. And as mentioned, this is our test setup here. So we're using a signal generator generating 14.25 gigahertz. That actually is going into a splitter and being split out into each of the TWT's input port. Okay, something I do want to point out on this, on the control switch, when you're in manual mode, of course, you can swap between either of the transmitters, but when you hit the push button to actually swap it, be sure to hold it for, I don't know, roughly a second so just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and put HPA 2 online. Right now 1 is online, putting 2 online. Again, that's about how long you want to hold that button. Just give it a good push. 
So right now, again, number two is online, and we'll throw number one back online. And if you catch that in the video, you should see that these two lights are blinking because transmit's turning off momentarily. It's like a 10 millisecond delay. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the switch into auto and I'm gonna go ahead and simulate a low power fault. Uh, do ensure, in our case, the client will receive these with the fault control enabled, but you need that enabled in order for this to work. And that's a function in the TWTs themselves. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and simulate a fault by disconnecting the input to the transmitter, or to the TWT. In this case, HPA, HPA1 is online. So we'll go ahead and disconnect the input to that. You see it is swapped. You have an RF uh, low level arm. It's swapped to the number two unit. This guy is transmitting and the baseball switch agrees with that. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect our input. Fault's all cleared. Again, now unit number two is online, so now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the input to number two to simulate a fault. And there's your fault on number two. It's swapped back to number one. Number one is now online. Pretty much concludes our demonstration. The only other thing to point out is before you power a transmitter off, make sure you turn RF off and turn the transmitter into standby, off, standby, and now there's about a five minute cool down period, which is extremely important.